Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to easily tint a glass because I was at the, um, at a, like, uh, actually the place I used to sell my artwork is at an antique mall, and I was at an antique mall today looking for, I wanted a funky old ashtray because I wanted to use it as a brush holder because, um, when I'm working, like on a watercolor, um, I've got my brushes usually all over my table, they're rolling off. I wanted something where I could lay a bunch down while they're, you know, wet, like after I rinse them off and let them dry before I put them away. Um, and also just to have them out while I'm working. And um, I didn't find any ashtrays. The uh, the owner told me the ashtrays really don't sell anymore, so people stopped bringing them in to sell. Uh, but then I found this set of two clear glass dishes, and it, they were only $1.25 for the set of both of them. And I thought, you know what? They're kind of pretty as they are, but I thought they'd be really pretty if I colored them with some alcohol ink. And, um, and I got this really pretty tinted look, but this happened after I made a complete mess and wasted a ton of alcohol ink. So I'm going to insert a picture of that, uh, because I did take a picture of it, it was kind of funny because I'd made such a mess with my hands. Um, I used way too much and way too dark ink, and I didn't like the look. But then as I was cleaning it off, because that's a good thing about alcohol ink, you can clean it off, um, I had a little bit of a tint left. I'm like, you know, that's kind of pretty. So I, re I kept cleaning it off, and then I used a really pale alcohol ink. Now, the funny thing about the pale alcohol ink is that I have a few different shades of pale alcohol ink, and I kind of thought, they came in like a kit, and I kind of thought, oh, what I'm going to use these for? These are pretty, you know, pretty pale. I don't even know what I would do, th do with these. Um, and turns out they're perfect for this project. So this one is salmon. It's a Ranger alcohol ink. And the key is here when you're tinting glass, I wouldn't do this on something you're going to want to like serve food in, but for something like a craft or a flower vase, it's going to be fine. Um, I am going to do the tinting on the bottom because that way I can use the inside of the dish for things. If I want to put a little water in it, if I, you know, am storing some stuff in it or I need to clean it, like it gets dusty or something, I don't have to worry about accidentally rubbing off some of the alcohol. Uh, so I'm working on a, just a nonstick Teflon mat and I'm going to give this a shake. I don't know if the clear ones really need a shake, but I'm going to just be on the safe side. Oh, and here's a tip. If your alcohol ink gets stuck and you can't open it, get one of these types of pliers. I don't know what they're called, but I just, you know, lift it out of my husband's uh, work area. It works great because it's got those teeth on there. I think it's some sort of plumbing plier. I'm not sure. Stanley 84-106. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure you can find that. Um, and sometimes the ink gets in there and it, and it sticks it on there shut. So that's a little, a little tip there for you. And I just got some dust on here. So when you get some glass, you want to make sure it's clean and then wipe it down with rubbing alcohol and then wipe it dry or just let it dry on its own. Rubbing alcohol dries really quick. And then I'm just going to apply um, a few little drops here and there. And then I'm going to spread it out. And what has worked really well for me to spread stuff out with is just a regular Q-tip. Um, especially when you have this like pressed glass as all these different, um, you know, little kind of nooks and crannies. You just want to kind of work that in. Now, if you didn't have any alcohol ink and you wanted to try this, something you could do is just get like a little, um, like glass tile or cup or something you can mix in. And what you'd want to do is like scribble a Sharpie in that, um, in that like little cup and then add a little rubbing alcohol to it and just stir it up and then you could use that because the sharpie ink is the same um now this is really pale so it can be kind of difficult to see where your ink is going and if you've got it covered so i would just work over a um you know work over a white piece of paper and that can help you see pretty well i can see that i need a little bit more i think i might mix it with a color that's a little bit darker like maybe this watermelon and I think I'm going to grab a piece of felt to apply it. This will keep it from getting too, um, me getting too much on there. Now, typically I use this piece of, like, this block with Velcro on it when I'm applying ink, but there's so many nooks and crannies here that, um, that I'm going to want to hold it with my hands and kind of, you know, fold it in half. And, uh, let's put both colors on there and be able to work it work it around. Oh, that's kind of a pretty color, but I want to spread it out because see how dark that is? Now, another thing I can do if that's too dark, I've got isopropyl alcohol in here, which is just your rubbing alcohol. So I can spray that on there and dilute my color and spread it around. So when you're buying alcohol inks, I have to say that getting a more... Um, Getting a more concentrated color is a better use of your money because otherwise you're just paying for alcohol and alcohol is pretty cheap really to get a bottle of alcohol. Let's just do this on the... I just want to do this on the mat so my paper stays. So I don't have to use another piece of white paper because I'm wicked stingy. And uh, let's cover this up here. 
I'm not gonna seal this basically because I want to make sure that if I change my mind or I find out that this was some treasure that's worth a lot of money from the <laughs> antiques mall, which I'm pretty sure it isn't, um, but if that was the case, I'd wanna be able to remove it. So that's why I'm not gonna seal it on top. And this will be waterproof um, and it will be pretty, fairly resilient. I mean, if I went to go scrub it or something or wipe it down with alcohol, it would come off. But for, you know, normal use, as a brush holder, it's gonna be just fine. So now you'd wanna let that dry, but I think I can safely set it down because it's you know all faceted, but look how pretty that is. It's just got a lovely rose tint to it now, and it's gonna be ideal to rest my, my brushes on. So I mean, I'll be able to put like, I could probably put, you know, nine or 10 brushes there. I typically only use a few per painting, but it's gonna be really easy to keep them organized and from rolling off my table. And then if I have any little doodads I wanna keep with a project, like, you know, maybe my credit card scraper or an eraser or whatever, I can store those in the vase. So let's take a look at both of them. I'll just zoom out a little bit here. You can see my messy mat, but I think they're so pretty and I'll have one for upstairs and downstairs. And that actually worked out better than a vintage ashtray because I got two for $1.25. You really can't beat that. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And remember, you don't have to have a little shallow dish for a brush holder, although it makes a really great one. Um, you could do this on mason jars. You could do this on um, any sort of cut glass vase. If you want to recycle a vase that you got flowers in or just, you know, kind of spruce up some um, clear glassware from the dollar tree just not for food items for um for decorative items and vases and stuff it's perfect thank you so much for watching thumbs up if you like it and until next time happy crafting